This is the first show of 2019. Yeah, baby. Yeah. This is it. And I got to say, I think it's going to be our worst. <laughs> I think just to be safe. It's real rusty. You don't want to come out too hot in January. Because <laughs> then you got nowhere to go. Things aren't hot in January in Chicago, Troy. Things are hot. It's, we're already steaming up here. So let's have like a low level of energy, low to medium. Mm -hmm. Don't really dig into your characters. <laughs> if we get into combat, just maybe like wait a long time before deciding what you want to do. Mm, before those eventually, are the best. before just like choosing to hold or do something not special. <clears throat> Joe, <laughs> I want a Matthew level of commitment tonight. That's what I want. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> to quote the late, great Frank Sinatra, Chicago is my kind of town. <laughs> it's like somebody took New York, lowered the buildings, widened the sidewalks, and removed most of the urine. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of it. You want to have a little urine. I mean, Just kind of keep things fresh. <laughs> I, don't, I love Chicago. It's great beer, great food, great restaurants, and the fourth best style of pizza in the world. Oh, ho, ho, ho. wait. Oh, well, hello. Oh. We, oh, hello. We, we hired extras. Thank you. I guess. My name is Lindsay. Everybody, Lindsay. give a round of applause for Lindsay. Lindsay. Oh, yeah. Bring a shot out. On IMDb, she'll be the girl who delivered drinks. <laughs> Thank you. Someone in the balcony named Richard. 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 Thank you, buddy. Where are you, Richard? Richard, you I can't son of a see gun. Anything. What is it? Oh, this is the really. This is. I heard about this. It's impossible to drink. What? what Joe, try it? it. Joe, you do it first. What is it? I'll, I'm great. just gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead. I'll drink and... anything. What a terrible idea. It's delicious. It tastes like uh, expired Altoids. <laughs> it tastes like Altoids that have gone bad. All right, I'll do it. Stare! This seems like a bad idea. Oh, God. Ooh. I have never had anything like that. Uh, that is new. What, uh, did, what did I just drink? Uh, Matthew drank it? You better be careful. <laughs> Matthew, how are you feeling? You, you've been sick this week. It's true. You know, if you just took care of yourself like the rest of us, <laughs> didn't drink so much, didn't stay up so late, maybe you could come to a live show and be not sick for a change. I'm hopped up on Dayquil, Troy. I'm hopped up on ibuprofen, and I'm ready to go. Okay. Good. <laughs> Matthew, you have to explain to me. This is Matthew's first trip to Chicago. True story. It's true. But I need you to explain to me how a playwright in his, what, late teens? How old are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, tw I'm 29, Troy. I'm 29. Okay. Plenty nine. How, how a playwright in his late 20s has never been to the only other city where theater is a relevant art form. <laughs> How is that possible? I'm not a successful playwright. Ah. <laughs> Are you ever worried about toiling away in an art form that will be extinct in three years? Does that bother you at all? Are you ever to worried about toiling away in an art form that will be extinct? We will live on forever. <laughs> forever! In the hearts of all these people, the smiles in every baby. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, you don't have to pay for Juilliard, do you? No. You don't? Oh, good. I was going to say, it's like investing in Radio Shack. You don't want to do that. <laughs> no, it's fine. If it doesn't work out, I have some friends in the newspaper business. <laughs> Maybe I can get you a job in the newspaper business. <laughs> Grant, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great. Grant's always worried that I'm going to be too mean to him up top. He I'm sensitive. <laughs> I'm big, but I have a, a very fragile heart. He finds a way every show to just kind of pull me aside and be like, now don't, don't, don't be too mean. <laughs> so I've decided I'm going to give you the old compliment sandwich. Oh, these are going to be bad compliments. No, come on! Are you still full from lunch or can you handle a compliment sandwich? Uh, well, the ravioli was light. So That's I, true. I take you did it. get the veal cheek ravioli. Yes. The good thing about a compliment sandwich, it's a finger sandwich to him, because all sandwiches are finger sandwiches <laughs> That's in true. his giant meaty That's true. paws. <laughs> all right, you're starting off well. I nope, like it. we're going to start with the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy visiting Chicago with you, because walking behind the street on you, uh, walking behind the street, walking behind the street. <laughs> what the 
the fuck does that mean walking behind the street? When I enter a third dimension, <laughs> I walk behind. Walking behind you on the street keeps me warm. Oh. Now a critique. <laughs> Sometimes looking at your head for too long makes me uncomfortable because it's, it's really big. <laughs> It makes me nervous like when I'm around the Lincoln Memorial. <laughs> Am I the only Why one that gets it, nervous? I don't around? understand that. Well, I, it always Lincoln follows Memorial, you with its I'm eyes. afraid it's going to come alive. Like, I know, it, <laughs> I know it's not going to come alive, but every time I see it, I'm like, that might come alive. And if it does, we're all screwed. Yeah, a stone giant. And uh, this particular compliment sandwich only had one piece of bread. That's all I have. <laughs> okay. It's That's open face, just like the hamburger Joe had at lunch. That's it's like an open face sandwich. An open face compliment sandwich. <laughs> you lost five pounds from that. Yeah. That's yes. amazing. You're welcome. <laughs> Skid, are you warm? Uh, I have to admit, I was caught a little off guard by the low temperatures <laughs> <laughs> in uh, Chicago in January. Uh, but in fairness to the planning committee who planned the dates for this event... There's no way to know what the weather in Chicago in January is going to be like. Wait, you just no. know, you're rolling the dice. This is a direct quote. The last time I was in Chicago was the middle of January. I went outside in a hoodie. And all of us were like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I yeah. think it's beautiful. Yeah. I had an ankle socks till this morning. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Troy, I have to, since we're talking about what you're wearing. You, you really give me a lot of shit about my outfit. <laughs> Well, you, you walked into the restaurant wearing actual pants. I did. I wanted to look nice at the restaurant, but I want to be comfortable here. <laughs> Since I had a child, I've decided I'm only wearing jogging pants. So I'm wearing some Adidas. What's wrong with that? Yeah. I'm cozy. Yeah, I'm just ripping away like an NBA player. Uh, do a lot of people know this, that Skid is a recent college graduate? Did you know that? Recent college graduate. Now, is it true that you majored in falling ass backwards into success? <laughs> Was that, did you minor in that or major? No, it just happened. It just, <laughs> do you think that UMass will ever call you back to give speeches to the like, graduates on how to I, not I, work no, hard? No, it's like I am the absolute worst model for any kind of real <laughs> success that you could. Literally everything that has happened to me has been by blind luck. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing else. You know what real I have actively avoided success my entire life. <laughs> and it's somehow sort of found me. <laughs> at 45. You can get another huge win tonight if you finish the show in that coat. <laughs> All two hours. Well, I'm actually thinking of abandoning the bit. Because oh. it's getting pretty hot. So. <laughs> it's getting warm. It was a good bit, Skid. I liked bit. it. I liked it. What would your advice be to like graduating seniors um, like don't reach for the stars yeah I mean, <laughs> reach for the snooze button uh, no I, I'll tell you exactly what um, do what do what I did uh, fuck around for about 25 years with no direction or plan and then just randomly meet people that will drive you towards something that you've wanted but didn't know you wanted your entire life I think that's good advice yeah, yeah. you guys think it's good advice it's certainly the most fun option for a recent grad. Joe, how are you good, buddy? Oh, man. <laughs> you I, walking voodoo dog. Is it me already? Yeah. I'm looking around. I'm like, shit, he did do all three. You know, they say you're never supposed to kick a man when he's down. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when he's always down? <laughs> <laughs> you got to kick him once in a while to make sure he's still alive. <laughs> hey, he's not moving. Hey, he's still alive. <laughs> You're down. God, I wish I could come, have comebacks. <laughs> I know. I'm so bad at that. Joe and I shared a hotel room this weekend, and he woke up this morning, and immediately, he thought I was still sleeping. I just said, like, seven mean things to him yeah. in a row. And he's, like, stumbling around the room in his boxes. He's like, how are you mean this early? Yeah. He doesn't wait for coffee or anything. He just launches right into yeah, no, vitriol. Yeah, like, hey, dude, how you feeling? Did you get any sleep? I mean, I can't repeat what he said. Please don't. It was so bad, I just turned, and I Please was like, don't. that was so mean. <laughs> I can't believe it's the first thing you said today on show day. But let's be honest. This is probably the happiest you've ever been in your life right now. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Right. That is right. Lady Luck has finally, has finally shown her light yeah. upon nature's footprint. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Nature's you are nature's footprint. footprint. What Mixing does that the mean? metaphors pretty hard there. Nature just stamped it. No, I don't know. It makes sense if you don't think about it. I liked it. So is nature Bigfoot? Is that how you think of nature? Don't worry about it, Matthew. Why don't you write a play about it? I will. Maybe gonna, I will. What are you going to call it? What are you going to call the play? Nature's, Nature's Footprint. Footprint. Nature's That's Footprint. That's the title right there. Yeah. You gave it to him. The Joe O'Brien story. It'll fit right in in the, the catalog of other Matthew Capitacasa classics. <laughs> yeah. Scintillating titles. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> a play by Matthew Capitacasa. <laughs> Jonathan Winters over here. With this He'll spell comeback. nature N A Y T U R E. <laughs> the lead character is Samantha Nature. <laughs> she went to an all girls college and then crushed Joe's dreams. No, you're excited. You're having a good time, which leads us to our big announcement. We promised a big announcement. <laughs> we got to do it here in Chicago. We've been sitting on this for a while, and we saved it for Chicago. It was for you guys. This is the kind of announcement where some of you might hear and be like, oh, cool, good for them. And then others will start to realize the implications and immediately orgasm. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Too late. Too late. <laughs> Let's wait 10 minutes before we announce it. Uh, as of this month, January 2019, uh, Joseph... Penny Feather O'Brien the Fourth. <laughs> That's not right. And me, Dr. Troy Lavalley Esquire. You have no degrees. The first, the first of his name. Uh, have gone full time with the Glass Cannon Network. We did it! You come on, this guy. We're doing it. <laughs> we quit we quit our jobs to do this full time and it's uh, your fault and it's your fault <laughs> no but it's thanks to the overwhelming support of the nace of course the overwhelming of support course. of people like you who come out and see us like this I mean we have we had no choice we have put our lives and the livelihoods of our families on the line here for this fly-by-night cockamamie scheme. <laughs> I know Joe's wife is so nervous. I know she's <laughs> freaking out. She's very angry. She, she's so mad. You have, a, you have a really good job. You had a really good job. Well, this is the thing. is like I worked tons of different jobs. I was doing freelance video. I was pulling crazy hours all over the place. But Joe, you were at the same job for 15 and a half years. You worked your way up from, correct me if I'm wrong, a lowly shoe shine outside the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shine your shoes, Governor. <laughs> to the head of your department. Yeah. That's right. And you gave it all up for this. <laughs> and little known fact, he was two days away from a pension. Two days. <laughs> two days. That's why she was really upset. Yeah, she, that really, I'm sure, pissed her off. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's gone. You got no pension, no 401k, no retirement plan, no health insurance. No insurance. No. no. Sometimes, Troy, you have to give up the paycheck. You have to give up the health insurance. You have to give up... <laughs> The comfort and the stability of a real job to, to, to take a real life goddamn adventure. You know what I mean? Yeah! That's true. Well, it is a, a, a risk, and I appreciate that you did it, but I think you're an idiot. I don't think so. I, don't think, I, I thought about it a lot. It is, it is a seriously huge commitment that, um, you know, I, I, I couldn't to be in this position is ridiculous. It's kind of like dream come true territory. I'm sure so many people here understand what it would be like to be in this position. And I can't even believe that I'm the guy here in this position that's even talking about this. It's ridiculous. 15 years in the same job and then to resign to do this, it's, it's not, um, you know, it, it can't, it can't ha well, I do know why I'm here. I'm, I'm here because, uh, well, there's a few factors. First and foremost, I... <laughs> I c none of it is possible. None of it is possible without the incredible hard work and dedication and uh, really just like unstoppable passion for the Glass Cannon Network that my good buddy and RGM, Troy Lavalle, has oh, for nice. this project. <laughs> Seriously, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Four more years. <laughs> But all the other guys, too, everybody else, it is, you know, I think in the last year and a half, we have been so 
blindingly busy with the glass cannon. We do stuff too. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, like all of these guys, we, have, we, have ne- we just don't stop moving anymore. We're constantly moving and we never stop. Uh, I never stop and just, and I'm going to stop right now in Chicago in front of all these fine people and just say thank you so much to all of you guys. Thank you, Skid. Thank you, You're Graham. welcome. Thank You're you, Matthew. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. It is, it's truly, That's it. it is, it is truly, truly remarkable. You don't, like, we're just a couple of buddies that started a new AP together. That's, that's all it is. We don't and even then, like each other. Right. <laughs> but then it got, like, really legitimately complicated, like, seriously complicated. And all of these guys, all of you guys, rose to the challenge. And we fought through a lot of tough stuff and, and made it through the other side. And it's just, it's just a testament to who you are as people. And I don't think this could happen with any other group. I mean, 190 plus consecutive weeks of the same five guys on a show every single week. That is unheard of. That does not happen. So you, are, you truly are remarkable people and I'm very lucky to be working with yeah. you. So I just, I just you too, man. To say that. You too, buddy. We really are. We're in like, we're in like gun smoke territory. Yeah, <laughs> for like the consecutive episodes, it's like it's crazy. It really is. It's ridiculous. And of course, obviously, as Troy said, it is. None of it happens without you guys. Of yeah. course, without you, none of you know this. This uh, operation doesn't move out of our living rooms. You know, and it doesn't become the. <laughs> quasi-professional operation it became. And it's because of you, seriously, like we know that you guys can uh, listen to other stuff. We know you can watch other stuff with your free time. We know that you can listen to the show and not pledge on Patreon. We know that you cannot buy any merch. You cannot, you could stay home on a freezing, freaking cold Sunday in Chicago (laughs) and not buy a ticket and drive for hours and take trains for hours to be here with us tonight. But you rise to the occasion too with us, and without that, that's what my wife sees. She sees the emails you guys write. She sees the Facebook responses. She sees the things that this community does that mean that it's going to go for a long ass time. And this, this change, this move to going full time is the first step to doing this for a really long time. And we're all in it together. For Highbury! For Highbury! For the rose and the light! Yes! Yes! Joe, I think you're going to really appreciate the time punch machine I put in the office. (laughs) We're going to report his hours every week. (laughs) Just get your hours in. It doesn't matter. I'm I'm twitching without it. Okay. (laughs) It's just like, Troy, how much... How much paid vacation do we get? (laughs) I made him work on Martin Luther King Day. (laughs) He did. I lodged a grievance. (laughs) Uh, I always have crazy dreams uh, on show week. My brain is just constantly moving, moving. So the other night, this is a completely true story. I had a dream that I was watching some pirated sci-fi show on like a very outdated laptop. Um, (laughs) What? And for some reason, I wanted to copy that show and using my expertise as a professional hacker, <laughs> as I was in this dream, I knew that the best way to do that was to s- gently slide an undercooked piece of bacon into the drive. <laughs> Slid it right in and went like, boop, boop. It accepted it, of course. Because <laughs> it's a dream. Wait, this was your actual dream? This was my actual dream. Oh my God, I had the same dream. <laughs> You were that bacon. Why, this is the anniversary of the bacon. <laughs> Why is the anniversary of the bacon? <laughs> Troy, that bacon's been dead for years. <laughs> yeah, I won't see bacon around here no more. <laughs> no, but I put the bacon in, and a message came up on the screen. I wish I was kidding. I woke up at like 5 a.m., and I wrote this strap down. It said, this is so stupid. It said, the fun drive has been activated. <laughs> <laughs> You were such an idiot. Oh, my God. <laughs> the fun drive fun has been drive. activated. <laughs> the fun drive. Well, sit back, ladies and gentlemen, because the fun drive is about to be activated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> true story. I taught Troy how to alt-tab today. That is true. <laughs> he never knew it before. He never had I was just shoving it. bacon into my computer. <laughs> <like an idiot. laughs> yeah. Why did this work? It didn't work. <laughs> All right, let me take you back. Let yeah, me take ha- you back. Joe, give me a C. A, a bouncy, bouncy C. C. <laughs> Bum. All right, that doesn't work. Give me something better than that. Uh, well, you mean Sirenscape. Yes. By the way, okay. that's how our, our CEO and boss gives feedback. 
<laughs> nah, something better. Something better. <laughs> yeah. That, but like good. <laughs> um, now we're talking. When last we left our mediocre heroes, they were continuing their exploration of this strange building that they found themselves in. They had previously awoken in a dungeon with no memory of who they were, where they were, or how they got there. One of them, a particularly odd character who thinks his name might be Sheila. He took the liberty of anointing them with temporary names. Mrs. O'Lady, as played by Matthew Capitacasa. Thank you. Initially, Brett Thank Ratner. You. Brett Ratner. And the man whose name I don't know. Tigwitz, baby. Now, Brett Ratner did not like his name, so he insisted on being called James. It's a name that he feels connected to in some way. It might not be my name, but it's a name. I have to leave, he said. Yes. From behind their prison bars, they see a strange creature, which they eventually find out is a doppelganger. It had altered its appearance to look like a doctor performing hideous surgery on an unknown man strapped to a table. After she killed the man, in addition to a poorly built and completely forgettable PC. <laughs> it's extremely well built. <laughs> forgettable, but extremely well built. <laughs> If he was well built, he'd be alive. <laughs> you still have to roll dice in this game, LaValley. This is my recap. <laughs> the heroes then kill her with ease and make their way upstairs by climbing through a defunct boiler where they are then attacked by two dire rats and a magical beast known as a Zoog or a Zoog, as I was corrected. Just as it seemed, as if they would be outmatched. A creature came up behind them. It was a gnome. A gnome hungry ghost monk that Sheila dubbed Tiny Murder Clown. After making short work of the creatures, they exit the room to the hall where they are accosted by a number. They can't tell how many, but a number of panicked voices behind a barricade with crossbows trained on them. They hear that tung, 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 after a short parlay, fearing that the heroes themselves could be doppelgangers, the men behind the barricade make them a deal. Return with three fresh doppelganger corpses. Not ones that they already killed with crossbow bolts. Not ones that have holes where crossbow bolts were. Bring them back, and then maybe they'll let them behind the barricade, presumably to some semblance of safety. By the way, they talked a really big game about all the doppelgangers they killed riddled with crossbow bolts that we weren't allowed to bring back. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a single doppelganger No, we did body. find one. We found, we found, we found some. one. Yeah. Where? You didn't listen to the episode. In the pile. I asked you to listen to the episode. Oh. What are you doing with your full-time job, Joe? <laughs> I know, you're full-time now. What are you doing with your excuse? excuse? Now it's serious. What are we paying you for? With your dedication Wait, was and his downstairs? ability to give criticism, we're going to go far. <laughs> <laughs> was it in the cellar? No, it was in the pile. It was in the... I'll get to The pile where the woman was? Yes, the pile right. where the there woman was. There was like three bodies there, actually, I think. Oh. Yes. Yeah. You guys know, right? Yeah. yeah. Are you guys on salary, too? <laughs> <laughs> no. You're all hired. You're all hired. <laughs> Everyone's hired. Joe, go back to shine and shoes. Go get your shine box. Go get your shine, go box. Get your shine box. I would love this if it was all an elaborate ruse to get Joe to quit his job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. I'm sending this to your company. <laughs> so, all right. You, 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 uh, where, where am I? So, yeah. So, you, you think that if you get behind the barricade, there's going to be some sort of safety back there. So, you... Go back downstairs to retrieve the one doppelganger you already killed. And while doing so, you check a door that you skipped past earlier to reveal a pile of corpses beneath a chute near the ceiling. You then head back to the boiler room to rest before exploring further. As you sleep, each of you are haunted yet again by strange, prescient dreams that blur the line between being awake and asleep. Tiny Murder Clown and Mrs. O'Lady are so affected by the dreams, they wake having recovered zero hit points. Sheila, Mrs. O'Lady, Tiny Murder Clown, the man whose name I don't know, now conveniently dubbed Tigwitz, 
and James, the rat, make their way up the hallway. They walk outside to a courtyard as searing rain almost burns their skin. They are attacked by giant centipedes while st- searching storage closets and... <laughs> Do you remember that skin, the giant centipedes? And as they continue further north, they discover a collapsed hallway and more bodies. This is where you found bodies that had doppelganger corpses with holes in them. One of the bodies, though, is shockingly still alive. It's a grandmotherly old nurse with a hideously broken leg. She calls out. She's like, please help me. I'm I'm hurt. Not dead yet. (laughs) Not dead yet. (laughs) She's still alive, but she can't move because her leg's all fucked. A wall collapsed on her leg, she says. And so you're like, you know what? We're just going to prop you up here, give you some water, continue forward into this next rubble-choked hallway. As they do, to the north, Tigwitz and Sheila see another body, half covered in debris. As Tigwitz bends down to inspect, a diminutive skull smashes at him as two disembodied hands like crawl up his body to try and strangle him. From behind, James hears a noise and turns to see the old woman just standing behind him, her leg dangling in midair, smiling at him. I think we should roll for initiative. Uh We're in Chicago. We're back. We're in Chicago. Let's roll for initiative. Let's do it. Roll for initiative. There you go, Nick Lowe. That sounds great. Yeah. I'm excited. I got a new iPad that Grant can't break from way over here. <laughs> oh, please. You'll find a way. You'll find a way with that giant head. <laughs> <laughs> My head is as big as his, and I'm like five inches shorter than him. Doesn't make me uncomfortable. One of Troy's weaknesses is relative size. It is. Yeah. <laughs> we are. Troy and I are essentially the same height, and yet I've been the shortest for you. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. You're very tiny. How tall are you? 5'8". But you stand 5'2". <laughs> You walk around with the countenance of a 5'2", man. <laughs> Don't Later. slouch, Matthew. All right, Sheila, what do you got? Oh, uh, I've... Uh, 15. 15. Ooh, yeah. that's good. Yeah, it is good. James. 18. 18 for James. I'm that open. may may keep you alive. Mrs. O'Lady. That's a 15 for me as well. Oh, fight, fight. Plus, two, I have a plus two modifier. What about you, Sheila? Modifier. I, oh, my modifier is plus six. Oh. I think that wins. That yes. is. That, you win this doesn't. round. And uh, <laughs> Tigwids. You know, Tigwids isn't really accurate. It should be Tigwidadink. Or Tig. I don't, yeah, I don't know how we settled on Tigwidink. We, we need a better name. Yeah, we, yeah. Grant. Tigwid Tiggy. No, 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 nine. No, 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 nine. Let's go to the map. Grant. Absolutely. Take it to the map. Let me just all tab. Here, look at my hands. <laughs> I don't know what That's that what is. That's what I'm doing right now. I've got it's bacon grease. It's actually command tab on the map. I've got bacon grease all over command my tab. computer. It's hard when you switch, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to remove Murder Clown from the I'll map. Oh, take him, yeah. Well, no, it's it's he's still there. Oh, right. Tiny Murder Clown is still there. What the hell's Tiny happen? Murder Clown is still there. At the start of the round, James, you see the Tiny Murder Clown has been slowly lagging behind during all of this. Seeing the old woman rise up to face you, he bolts back down the way you came. Uh, Paige is unresponsive, Troy. Just give me one second. Uh, this is a brand oh, no. new Macintosh computer Troy insisted on getting. Let me just, uh, so there's exit. no map up there. Oh, no. Give me one second. No, it just froze. We're reloading. We're reloading. This uh, is a prof- it's professional support, operation. Support roll 20, everybody. I think Skid has a perfect drop for this. Oh, I do. Hosted by a, a beautiful mustachioed man. Oh, okay, no. That's not it. That's not it. Nope. I thought it was going to be the Jeopardy theme. Well, while you're working on that, I can tell you what Tiny Murder Clown's doing. He sees this old woman rise up to face you, bolts back down the way you came, and as he does in the distance, you hear like, as a bunch of crossbows go off. Oh, no. What? It's going to fuck up our whole thing. Tiny Murder Clown is... Even if they're friendly crossbows, they're going to fuck up our whole plan. (laughs) That's all you hear. (laughs) 
God damn it, Lavalley. I'm what's just gonna delete what Tiny does, Murder Club. What does one's one publisher from Paizo hear from all, from Portland right now? He will receive an email in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I could do I could do a, I could do an impression of, of him. <laughs> do your do your best, Eric. Moment. This is forever, you know. It's on the internet. <laughs> okay. Tee-hee, I'm gonna abandon the party. It's the thing I do seventh best. There you go. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Should send Mona an email tomorrow. It's just the subject is notice of termination. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were in the hotel earlier before we went to dinner, and Joe was like, very weird. He just kind of came to me. He was like, I think you fudge initiative rules. I do. And I was like, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> no one else was around, but I was still horribly offended by this. I'm like, how dare you? And he's like, well, you always roll over twenty. I'm like, I just call it like I see it. And he's like, I guarantee, I guarantee the doppelganger is going to roll higher than James. And I said, well, I'll tell you right now, it has an initiative bonus of plus one. Right. And your initiative bonus is... Plus seven. Right. And it rolled higher than you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this every is, level. This is going to be a rare instance of me backing up Troy. You, you'll notice where Troy's GM screen is right now. Just blocking my side. Just blocking right. Grant. <laughs> because I have watched all of his die rolls, and everyone he's ever called out has been true. Thank you, Grant. The only point of integrity this man has is in his die rolls. No, it's terrible. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about his in-game die rolls. He rolls all of his initiatives before the session. I think he... So he comes in, he's like, yeah, I pre-roll them all. And then you're like, 19. And every time you're like, well, I know I'm going second or third behind... <laughs> And you always are. So at I level. Understand, No, it's understandable. But like telling a man, like accusing him of fudging his die rolls, is like saying that Ernie Banks corked his bat. Right. Yeah, how dare he, you? And he did. Right? Chicago. Right. Pistols at dawn. Doesn't seem like that kind of crowd, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite land, buddy. <laughs> that was a very Dennis Miller-esque joke. Yeah. <laughs> Like when Franz Ferdinand got... Uh, <laughs> you rolled an 18, I rolled a 20. I'm sorry, Joe. So you rolled a natural 19. Uh, yes, I rolled a natty wow, 19. that's really impressive. Yeah, you like that? Really impressive. We'll see if you like this claw to the face because she steps up. Shaboink. That's going to be a 16 against flat-footed. Uh, that is a hit. That is a hit. How about max damage? Joe, don't oh, worry about nope. it. You're a first level wizard. 12 points of damage isn't going to hurt you that much, is it? Are you serious? Yes, 1d8 plus 4 is 12 points. All right, of I'm damage. unconscious and dying. Oh! oh no. Somebody get out the bacon. I want to copy this. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm unconscious and dying. What do you mean, am I really unconscious and dying? 12 points! Roll, the mic, this is the mic. Mic. I have good news. 19. I have good news. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> all right. You want to roll a constitution? Very important <laughs> constitution save. Uh, all right. DC 14. I am negative four. DC 14. Made it exactly. Oh. Natty 12. All right. Stabilize. Stabilize. Stable. Good luck, fellas. Wow. Hey, Joe, can you get me a drink? No. <laughs> yeah, Joe, can you give me a fresh Red Bull? Actually, I would like a drink. Uh, I'd like to get one. It I, is, uh, yeah. Five it malorts, is. please. <laughs> no, no, no. No. It does, is this ne ever, does this ever happen to you guys? You have like a month between sessions, and you know what combat's coming, and you know where you are, and you're like, I know what I'm going to do. And you immediately roll low initiative, get uh, put unconscious, and can't do any of your plans. You rolled really well on initiative, Joe. I did. I did. Well. You rolled really well. I did. I just rolled a little better. It's <laughs> such a lie. Uh, it is Sheila's turn. Sheila, you are standing right next to Tigwids, and you see these this little head smash against him. There's a dead body there, uh, and hands crawling up Tigwids' body. Uh, all right. So he turns to the woman that uh, we previously saw in the hallway. Uh, and says, uh, oh, good to see you up and about again. <laughs> Seems you're feeling better. And, uh, okay, so Kent, does he have a... Oh, boy. All right, so I'm going to take a five-foot step away from Tigwitz. Okay. And I am going to throw a bomb. I'm going to throw a bomb. At James? No, no. At the creature attacking him. Okay. Uh, 
Ah, oh, so you're gonna throw it at the body. Uh, you, uh, you know what? No, that's stupid. That's really stupid. Skid, this oh, no. is a, okay. an right. imaginative game. You can do anything you want. That is, that's so true. All right, you are so, only limited by your imagination. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a full move, like go behind James. Okay. And you see right there, the wall stops. Like all that rubble chokes the hallway to the point that you can't pass through. If you want to get around, you have to go through the door. Through the door. But I can see her through the door? You absolutely can. Okay. An and unconscious James. I, in a, in a signature move, I'm gonna throw a bomb behind that yeah, woman. Yeah, there you go. Uh, ah. So I'm going to try to AC natural five. 20. Yes! Oh! <laughs> Which is not really, you, that's not a crit. Yeah, you really crit that It's a crit on the space. square behind her. Right. That, that square, square behind her up? is yeah. fucked up. It's got to be a five foot pit at least. Um, but she. <laughs> that square will never walk again. No, that's, yeah, that's what It will never dance for. with its daughter in her <laughs> wedding. Never dance at her daughter's Ever. wedding. Uh, all right, yeah, you crush the hell out of that square. So she takes six points of damage against a DC 14 reflex save for half. DC 14 reflex save, 15. Boo. Fail. It's a fail. fail. Boo. Uh, all right, so how many, is that three points of damage or yeah. two points? Right? Wait, three. Three? Yes, three. three. <laughs> I'll allow it. You see what now, why I only graduated college this year. And you didn't take any time off. You were just no. really... I was working. The I was taking 12 credits. Really the struggling. 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Every semester. I did summers, too. It's his Mrs. O'Lady's turn. So can you tell me what is I happening? I can't hear you. you got to speak up. <laughs> oh. Can you tell me what's happening with Grant? Oh. What's happening with Tigwitz? What's happening with Tigwitz? Well, uh, from where see? you're standing, you see Tigwitz just like... Ha! as things are smashing into him and crawling up his body from the same space as this corpse. So I see, like, disembodied hands on mm -hmm. him. Like, just, like, thing, but multiple, like... Little tiny hands. Like Adam's family thing. Yeah. But two of them. Two of them. On him. And a little head. But the head is on him, too? Yeah. Well, the head is just like, hey! Hey! <laughs> hey, buddy! Hey! Uh, you're gonna die, buddy. Hey! <laughs> I have an idea. Oh boy, it's always something. <laughs> Just read the core rule book. Is there a rule for this idea? And do what they allow you to do in there. I don't think there's, well maybe. So, in my mind, uh -huh. I just weighed my hand, like I went like this, and I was like, this weighs about two to three pounds. What weighs two to three pounds? Oh. My hand. Okay, Excuse okay. Me. I have a spell that allows me to move an object, lift it and move it at will from a distance, objects that weigh five pounds or less. <gasps> I see. So could I use this spell to fling one of the hands off of Tigwitz and across the room? Oh. Move one of the objects. Does the object get some sort of will save? It is not. If it's unwilling? Because this is an unwilling It is an, it has to be an object. All right, it does have to be one non-magical, unattended object. Oh, I'm sure that floating hand isn't <laughs> magical. <laughs> Listen. Go ahead, try it. <laughs> it's a mundane dis disembodied right. floating hand. <laughs> Troy, just hear him out. It's something you get at 7-Eleven. Not one. <laughs> you are not attending any of your hands right now. That's true. That's true. They are unattended. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do with them now. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm overthinking. <laughs> now you're worried. Now you're making me worried. <laughs> uh, no, you can't do it. It's stupid. It's, <laughs> it's a dumb Aww. idea. They say it's not stupid. I can't wow. hear. It. Fine, I'll mind thrust the old lady. Are you there happy? you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Roll Wilson. You can't do that either. <laughs> mind thrust the old lady, huh? Yeah. That's just rude. Uh, will save. Natural one. Yeah. You take six points of damage. Nice. Your brain Ooh. hurts a lot. Nice. That's great. Like My brain lot, hurts every time you have a turn, Matthew. <laughs> Um, and then Mrs. O'Lady will take, we'll say where she is. You don't want to do anything else? Thanks for allowing me the chance to have a move action, but no, it's I respectfully only, decline. Only because I forgot. <laughs> uh, one of the hands, Grant. They have different initiatives? Oh yeah. Oh boy. One of the hands just... I tried, buddy. One of the Thank object you. hands tries to claw you, just like it crawls up and it's like, ha, tries to claw you before grabbing around your throat. <laughs> 
eight against flat-footed. Against flat-footed, that is a miss. Yeah. You're all right, LaRusso, and it's your turn. You have three things coming at you. Do I feel like they're impeding my movement? If I were attempt to move, could I do so? Yes, but it would incur. I will incur gladly. Okay, could it go? Oh, well. Three times. Three times. All right, I'm going to swing at this head. I think you should do it. Gosh, You're going to swing at the head? Is that Is right? it because I made fun of your head earlier? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I just want to take a little off the top, and I'll have a normal boy's head. <laughs> a size, He's a real boy. I'm a size eight and a quarter hat. It's yes. impossible to find. Um, yeah, so I'll, it just seems like taking a swing at the hands around my neck seems crazy. I think you should swing at the head. Let's do it. Oh! Natural 20. Oh! oh! Well! You called it, dude. This side of the table. You it's called hot. it. Before the show, he was like, I'm going to crit. You said it. I, I, want, to, I want to hit it and crit. Second Do attack. It. Natural 17 on the die for a conference. Wow. <laughs> 10 points of damage on that. Yeah. Head. Wait, are we not doing fan critical? Oh, do we not? That's do a great fan point. Ah. Joe, please. Do we I'll not, keep the damage. Do we not do fan critical? <laughs> <Keep> the damage. <laughs> yeah, do your fan critical. All right. That's not my fan They might critical. be here. Yeah. Uh, is Trevor from Portland here? No. Trevor? Does anybody know Trevor from Portland? Just keep reading until someone's here. All right. <laughs> uh, oh. Numb fingers. Oh. oh. It's a head. I wonder if it's controlling the fingers. Your attack hits the target's weapon wielding arm. So you just hit the head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, crushing or severing a nerve, blah, blah, blah. Double damage and drops whatever it's being held, so it's irrelevant. But you do do double damage. All so right. It so it drops. It drops. Well, 10 points, points of damage. Throat. Yeah, I mean, it, it is it the controlling throat. the hands? You don't know. Well, it would drop one of them. Okay. If it was. So uh, this just says it drops whatever is held in their hand. Okay. So him, it's holding him. It would let go of me. A couple of things are going to happen. Yeah. We're talking transitive property, baby. <laughs> they're like, I got my money's worth. <laughs> he said the catch no, no, they're not. Not yet. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Set they're the magic minimum phrase. Phrase. Quick, Grab the iPads and run. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to crush them all. When I find out, we're not very good at this. Uh, you destroy the head. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. You have cut off the head of the snake. However, I need all of you, with the exception of James, to roll a perception check. Oh dear. Perception check. Perception check. I'm gonna, perception use, check. I'm gonna use inspiration on this. I, it will still not help. Can you use inspiration on your voice, Matthew? Oh. <laughs> You're the meaning in my life. <laughs> You're my inspiration. It is funny, like Matthew's been trying to save his voice for the last two days. So he hasn't really said anything, but like a couple of times, it's like he said something that was, he saved it for when it was really funny. So it's like minimalist Matthew is the best Matthew. I met Matthew in the lobby to go to Pequots. Anyone here a Pequots fan? And uh, he didn't tell me beforehand that he lost his voice, so we just stared at each other for 10 minutes straight. <laughs> Until he finally pulled up his phone and said, I hate you. <laughs> there were a few times at Pequod's that Grant said something emphatically, and Matthew would just go like this. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, it's factually incorrect. Was it was like, like having lunch with a mime. It was awesome. <laughs> Like, I know he's wrong. I did say one thing at Pequod's, and that was after I had the first bite, I said, oh, God, and had a heart attack. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but so quietly. Just very quietly. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Sheila, what'd you get for perception? Uh, 14. Okay. Uh, Tigwitz. 20. Okay. And uh, what's your name? Mrs. O'Lady? Mrs. O'Lady. What'd you get, O'Lady? 11. 11. Okay. <laughs> Sidebar. You notice the corpse. Something seems to be wriggling inside of it. Separate from the action that's going on right now. You have a chance to react to this if you choose. I'd like to t- I'd like to take a move action if I'm not impeded by that. I'll take an attack of opportunity, maybe. Because I, I can't attack anymore, right? Can I do a knowledge check before I make a move? Knowledge religion, maybe? Yeah. All right, let's see what happens. Come on. This is your thing. Oh, yeah. Yes! 
20. Oh, I'm sorry, 22 knowledge religion. 22, ooh, DC 23. Oh, he does pre-roll his initiatives. I'm kidding. Yeah. I don't know what the DC is. Uh, <laughs> so knowledge religion to try and figure out what's going on. There is some sort of a haunt manifesting right now. Oh, uh, no! Yeah. Oh, my God. No! And only you are aware of it. Can you channel? I can't channel. I can cure light wounds. Oh, no. That won't help. Yeah. I don't think those are equivalent. You have a chance to act in this separate side round. Oh, no. If you'd like to. I don't know. I mean, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. We fought a lot of ways, right? I just want to give it to you and watch you squirm. (sighs) Well, how does it manifest? What does he he sense? What is it? You just see the the, the dead corpse, like the stomach is like undulating. Oh, no. Oh, Oh, no. While a hand is on you, the head is gone. I'm going to move adjacent to James. Move. Bold. Yes, I haven't adjacent taken a move action. Adjacent to James. I'll take the tax of opportunity from the Hanzos. Okay. Hanzonis. The Hanzonis. Hopefully they don't roll natural twin zonies. Shut up. <laughs> First one goes to attack you. Natty 19. Hits you for two points of damage oh. and attempts to stop your movement by strangling you. Oh, no. That is going to be a miss. All right. The second one goes to attack you. Natty 17, another two points of damage and attempts a grab Oh, no. And misses on the grab. Go to hell Oni. All right. (laughs) Go to hell Oni. (laughs) Go to hell Oni. So you can attempt to move away. I will move directly adjacent to my main man, James, a.k.a. Brett Ratner. So you move to James. Mm-hmm. Okay. It is now, sometimes I think my computer's a touch screen, and I just, why isn't this working? <laughs> just needs more bacon. You know, PCs have that ability. <laughs> oh. You know, Bottle if cap. you were to buy a PC, they would have that ability. Yeah. Oh. Well, I don't do that. <laughs> uh, now it moves back to the normal round of turns. And it's your actual turn, Tigwitz. Oh. Did I you feel- take your turn? Yes. Oh, you did. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's. I should have lied. If someone the- asked you if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> no, it was the head's. <laughs> All right, so it was the head's turn, and now it's the other's hand's turn. That hand moves off its spot and uh-huh. comes after you again. It floats through the air. Yes, it's just kind of like. No, it crawls like. Okay, Adam's family for sure. It is a 10 to hit. Miss. Miss. New round. Okay. The doppelganger. Don't. <laughs> oh, no. Do not. Oh, no. Coup de gras? What do you think? Oh, sweet. Fucking <laughs> so I'm not mad. I'm just upset with you. I'm, just, I'm not <laughs> mad. I'm upset. So what my dad told me when he caught me playing hooky from school. Is that I thought you were going to say something very different. Yeah. I, I thought, <laughs> so. I, that Did sounds you hear like that's not my actually head? what happened. <laughs> he <laughs> caught me I and said, said, I'm not mad. I'm just confused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why? Is that how you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't come in here. <laughs> All right. Do you think that, that this character can stand on James's space while it's unconscious? All right. Difficult terrain. All right. It's difficult. You're a difficult it is. terrain. Uh, but it takes a five-foot <laughs> step. And it's going to do two attacks. It's going to take a move action. First one. In the difficult terrain. Shut up, Grant. (laughs) That is a house rule. Claw attack on (laughs) Sheila. It's going to be a 20. Wait, is that a house rule? No, it's a rule. The body is difficult terrain? The body is difficult terrain. That's a real rule? Yes. Grant, I'm sorry I yelled at you. Bottle cap. Give me a bottle bottle cap. cap. (laughs) Yeah. Give me the bottle cap. The people of soccer. Well, now I'll never give it. I didn't bring any. <laughs> I They're got... available. They're available for purchase at the merch booth. They're I... also available for purchase at the bar. I... Yeah. I... I'm sure we're. They sold come out. free with every bottle of beer. <laughs> I got cans. Oh yeah. Oh, that's true. Your hands are tied. Sheila, you take ten points of damage. Oh. What? Yeah, it's took one move action. I am. I am unconscious. Did it make an attack? Did you make an attack roll? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
It was a 20 to hit. Oh, I'm assuming sorry, a 20 hit. That. Sheila, you're unconscious oh. and dying? I am. All right. I promise if you ever play in his game, that will work. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, I mean it. If you ever play in his you, game. Can he replace you for the rest of the show? That's <laughs> fine. I'll be there at the bar. Go. He bought one of the new shirts. I think he, he's earned yeah, it. Yeah, I love that new shirt. Yeah. Woo! So let me get this straight. Sheila and James are unconscious and dying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. a terrible I think GM. You did it. I'm familiar with the Pathfinder system. You did no. it. I, uh, Man. I feel, I feel bad. <laughs> James, it's your turn. You're unconscious and you're stable. And but you stable. can't do anything. Yeah, so he's... I think he's having terrible nightmares. Sheila, how far below zero are you? Uh, four, negative four. Both of us. I need you to roll a DC four. 14 Not fine, he says. What's your con? My con <laughs> is uh, 12, so. Okay, plus yeah. one. Natural 20. Yes! They're going to live forever. Jingwitz going to save us. Jingwitz, save us. <laughs> I like how your stabilizing save music is Welcome to the Jungle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have drops, finally. I want to use them. <laughs> yeah. Seems like overkill. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. O'Lady, your party's dying around you. Yeah, your no turn. kidding. Um, okay, Mrs. O'Lady is going to do a mind thrust. I guess I need to take a five-foot step, don't I? Uh, I'll take a five-foot step. Okay. And then she'll, do a, she'll, she'll look very intently at the doppelganger and do a mind thrust roll. We'll save. Kill okay, mind. will save Kill mind. The old will save, huh? That's the one. All right, then. I'll use my neon green 14. DC 14. Oh, come on! I didn't know that. But uh. I rolled max damage, so three points of damage. Oh! You guys will be fine for at least another round. So I took a five-foot step, so I can't do another move action, right? That is a move You can do a move equivalent action. Right. But you can't move. You can't move again. Oh, all I want to do is try to grab the ham that's on Tigwitz. That's not a move. No, that's action. a that's a standard action. That's, yeah, that's what we call a standard action. Yeah, so. you'll you'll get it one day. What if I try to just like? <laughs> what if I try to do like Indiana Jones like brush it off him like the tarantulas? Well, that sounds like that's, a move action. That that sounds, sounds, yeah, that's yeah. a move equivalent. That's a whole yeah. different thing. That's yeah. a whole different thing. No, no, <laughs> can't do these. What things. What if I pull out a little brush and try to be like, like I'm like cleaning off his shoulders as like a ballot? I feel like we talked you, about this before the show. <laughs> <laughs> Were you armed with a brush? Never go Let out me see it on your character sheet. <laughs> well, you know what you can do? What you can, can deal do? with the hand that just moved onto your space and try oh, to uh, no. attack you. Can I ask you a question? Not onto your space, but near your space. Yes. Was it part of your plan to do a TPK this early in the show? You know what? My plan is just to let the dice roll and see what happens. Yeah, I know. I just want to have fun. If you guys have fun, great. But really, I just want to have fun. <laughs> uh, all right, disembodied hand, we'll call it one, goes to claw you. Eight misses. Miss. That's gonna be fine. And then where are you standing? Did you actually move or you just said you moved? No, I moved myself. Did you? Nope, it didn't it didn't do it. No. <laughs> How convenient. Where are you gonna move? Where is this five foot step? I just did it. He did, did it. it. Is it to he the middle it. or straight up? Straight up. Okay. It's very important that I know these things. That's why we play on roll 20. <laughs> it is Tigwitz turn. Tigwitz, two down, two to go. Oh my god. Come on. Uh, Tigwitz's initial idea was to help heal James and get him back up. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. But, uh, <laughs> but Joe and I had a long discussion at lunch about how ineffectual he felt he would be in this combat. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't recall that. I, I'm not crazy. I wasn't listening to anything you guys were saying. That's true. <laughs> This kid's still drunk from I was time. just watching Matthew. I was just like waiting to see what kind of what he's going to say next. He's come up with. Tigwids is going to take a swing at this doppelganger. At the doppelganger. Because you see her take down two people. Two mm -hmm. It's time to cash it. in the bottle cap first off. Yeah! This is the time, Grant. Yeah. Um, for what? What bottle cap? <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Here it comes. Natural oh! 20. <laughs> oh, yes! Mm. Let's get ready to rumble! Brap, brap, brap! Oh, you are the best! Oh, 
And it's a new die. Do you see big red die. over here? New die. Oh, nice. I also made sure this one cheated. Here we go. 14 Ooh, to confirm, yeah. 18 to confirm. That's a confirmed crit. Yes! Oh. Question. Are you a named character? <laughs> oh, that's a good that that's is actually, a good question. That's the semantics. That's a fair question. Made. Yeah, hey, actually, no, he has a name. We just don't know it. That's true. You're right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I got to be honest. I sort of just picked one because it seemed close. Is Jeremy from Wisconsin here? No. All right. Uh, wow. Jeremy from Wisconsin s split in twain. Oh. <laughs> slashing weapon only. Do you have a slashing weapon? Yes. Yes. Kukri. Your blade finds its mark on the side of your target. Target must roll a reflex save. Passing reflex save results in normal damage, and the target is no longer at risk. If the target fails the reflex save, double damage and a fortitude save, or be split in twain and permanently dead. Oh, wow. You gotta be kidding. So reflex save first. If you make the reflex save, normal damage. If I fail, I'm dead? No, if you fail, you get a fortitude, fortitude save. save. And then if you fail that, you're dead. Oh boy. All right, reflex save. No, if he fails the reflex save, Come double. On, fail that reflex, John! Roll it out here. Okay. Okay. They can't We're see. We're all friends. Chance. It's pretty high. It's a uh, 21. And it's against my. No, it's against your adjusted two hit, which was 18, so. Yeah. I have further confirm. D, yeah, your confirm roll, which was 18, right? It's 21. I yeah. rolled a, oh, no, I rolled a 14 on the die, did I say? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's 18. Yeah, all right, so, so normal damage. Normal damage. So it's worse than actually having a critical. No, Thanks a lot, Wisconsin. Awesome. <laughs> the cheese products of Illinois are far superior to that of Wisconsin. <laughs> wow. Let's go, dairy farmers. Let's make Exploding the best dice? cheese ever. Them's fighting words. Exploding dice? Exploding dice? Exploding, yes. Sure. All right. <laughs> Skid, watch this. I'll watch. Blow on my own dice. That's illegal in the casino. Nah, oh. Uh, boy, minimum damage, four points of oh, damage. Oh, God. Uh, it's the worst crit I've ever what seen in my life. Sound and fury down. signifying nothing. I bet you Jeremy's here and he was just ashamed of that crit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him at all. It's all right, buddy. I appreciate it. You tried. It is now disembodied hand number two's turn. Disembodied hand number two will again attempt to grab at Tigwitz. Natural 20. Oh, man. Not a named hand. Not a... Just a mundane, non-magical floating hand. hand. An object to Matthew. Right. Like a candlestick. Like uh, a candle to confirm, or a severed hand. 19 to confirm. That's a confirm. Rocks! Yeah. Rocks tonight! That's it, dude. Done. All right. Couple things. That's Four it. points of damage. And now, are you still uh, you know, still right? a... Four points of damage? You still up. Okay. Now goes to grab you. Natty 19. That's a, that thing's grabbing you. And uh, you can no longer speak because it's strangling you. Oh no. Nor can you cast spells with verbal components. You'll be fine. I'm sure so you'll be fine. So much for the cure light wounds, man. So this thing just, stop touching me. <laughs> Such your small cold hands. You're grappled. <laughs> You're grappled, you're strangled, you can't speak or cast spells with verbal components. Two of your compatriots are unconscious and stable. And Mrs. O'Lady is useless. She's not useless. <laughs> she thrusted your mind. And it's the doppelganger's turn. Oh, oh no. God. Oh, my God. We're going to take a five-foot step. <laughs> I thought you were going to say we take a five-minute break. We're going to take a five-minute break. <laughs> and think about making new characters. And we're going to start out, we're just going to start out with one attack on Mrs. O'Lady. With my neon green D20. <laughs> Ooh. That's going to be a 13 to hit. Miss. Oh, yes. Second attack. On Mrs. Holade. <laughs> 17. That hits. Oh, no. Oh, God. 1d8 plus 4. 10 points of damage. Oh, my God. Mrs. Holade is unconscious and oh died. Oh, my God. No. No. I'm wrong. 
What? I'm wrong. Mrs. O80 is disabled. Oh. Oh, you're at oh. zero. Oh. Huge difference. Huge difference. Because now it will just keep attacking you. Okay. Moving right along. James, Sheila, Mrs. O'Lady. All right. <laughs> so before the show, yeah. Grant told me like 17 times that he has a potion of cure light wounds on his belt. It was 14. You lie. D- don't go down this road. You're disabled. You can't like... You're not going to be able to... You can move or take a standard action or just put the chest piece down. And yeah, call. there's not a lot I can do. You could grab the potion, but then that's the Killer. Would that provoke? I'm sure it would. Uh, okay. You got any of those mind thrusts left? Nope. Oh, no. What if, use them up. Oh, so, boy. Oh, boy. I'm gonna use yeah. my. I'm gonna stab at it with my sword cane. There you go. Yeah. All right. You could roll a natural twenty. I have a minus one to hit. You'll be fine. Seven. <laughs> there was not a natural the AC twenty here. Yeah. Look, see the eight is next to the twenty. Nope. <laughs> Does, did anybody give me a minus eight to my AC? No, then that's definitely not a hit. That guy, the oh, guy dude. who gave the bottle caps. just cap. giving out bottle caps, giving yeah. me minus. Just, he's that? a debuffer. He's just he's evil, evil eyeing me. We got a witch! There's a witch! There's a witch! <laughs> Get him! Hang him! Uh, he bought the shirt. He should be able to do a minus eight to your AC. Disembodied hand number one goes after Mrs. O'Lady. That is, uh, I'm assuming, a nice juicy hit with a 21. Yep. Two points of damage. Let's see if we grab you. I'm unconscious well, un- and die. Ah. Well, it still can try and grab and strangle you to death. Yes, it could. By the rules of the game. Yes, it could. <laughs> An Should- eight against your unconscious CM Dizzle. <laughs> uh, I have a- no, it misses. Ah? Huh? Yeah. Okay. What Lucky a you. stupid hand. <laughs> It's almost like an object. What a dumb hand. That's the intelligence of an object. I'm just trying to be creative over here and you kill my character for it. Yeah. Sheila, James, Mrs. O'Lady, all unconscious. The hand goes. It is now Tigwid's turn. I don't want to say that the fate of the world rests on what you do here. The fate of this tour rests on it. I just want you to know. We're all counting on you. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, Grant. Give it up for Grant. Come on. If Seriously, anybody, if the entire party's lives rested in one player's hands, who would you want it to be? Yeah. Grant. One die roll? 100% Grant. Grant. That's like, you want one shot made yeah. at the end of the game? Right. Michael Jordan. Exactly. Chicago, am I right? Right? I like how we're just saying Chicago things. I'm just trying. Like, I flew into I O'Hare Airport. <laughs> <laughs> I, we came here on Wacker Drive. <laughs> you know who my favorite Chicago Bull was? Horace Grant. Oh! oh. Ron Kraut. So, uh, lo- lo- it might have been his twin brother, Harvey yeah. Grant, to play for the Bullets. Grant, what are you going to oh, do? Oops. Before you start rolling like a maniac, yeah. what are you going to do? Talk I, it out. So uh, right now, I am on difficult terrain. I can... Egress back into difficult terrain to engage hand number one, I believe. Is the, egress a verb? Uh, yes, it, yes, it means exit. Just making sure. Ingress, and it's a German. All right. Route. Anyway, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> I just want to make you nervous. Uh, along with the alt tabbing. The alt tabbing? Um, and uh, so I can move back to attack that uh, hand, but then um, the doppelganger is going to be able to move right up to me and take two attacks. You know that the hands do not pose the greatest threat. Right. It's Doppy, Doppy McGee. So it's the doppelganger I want to take care of. It's doppelganger. And I'm terrified. A, egress and ingress are Latin words, by the way. I just apologize. Nobody asked you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Working with Troy is the best. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to attack. I'm going to attack the doppelganger. That's all I can do. Come on, Grant. Come I, on, I want to run. Nine. <laughs> Now add your modifier. Nine. <laughs> you failure! It's so bad! Yes, that is a miss. 
And you're still grappled, strangled, and can't cast spells. Oh, man. We still have an hour to go. I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> can, can we fill time for like 42 minutes, minutes? Be very precise, Skidder. We're not going to leave Chicago alive. <laughs> a funny thing happened in the way of the theater. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. It's the doppelganger's turn. <laughs> You've all been in this seat before. GM's out there. Useless party. Fudging initiative rolls. You've all been there. <laughs> Fudging initiative rolls. I got two attacks. I mean, I just get killed. It's straight up kill. The greatest part before you go is Joe told me, if I get a really good initiative, I have an incredible plan. I was so excited. I have the greatest plan, Grant. And his eyes lit up like the, like, the, it was like a third so child. Fun. He was so excited about this plan. It I mean, been... I think a TPK is pretty fun, to yeah. be honest. But that's just me. You did kill a character in the first session. All right. <laughs> she, uh, the doppelganger stops. Coot across the rat and runs away. <laughs> it's a way out. I'm just saying, it's a way out. I mean, Don't even gotta, think about it. It's got to take several turns to drag his body back to that pile of bodies in the other room, right? So we can get away then. We're going to do a full attack action on Tigwids. <sighs> this got really tense. Yeah. Glad I wore jogging pants. <laughs> Me too, Troy. Joe Me too. can see everything. <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible back here. <laughs> Why did you buy mesh ones? I don't know. I just wanted to let him breathe. The smell of the sweat alone is horrifying. <laughs> First attack. Natural three. Okay. Oh, come on. One more, dude. One more. Oh, gotta survive. Scratch it out here. I'm gonna stretch my dice rolling hand. One more miss. You can do it. That's not all you do with that hand, Troy. Don't you worry about it. It's low-hanging fruit, Grant. Just like, well. Second attack. He's like 40, Woo. so they're really. Oh, I missed. Oh. 13. Miss. Wait, well, but there's still hands. Yeah. There's still hands. You, get, you basically have one more round to They're really this handsy. Out. Oh my god. Oh, I like that. It's James' turn. It's Thank Sheila's you. turn. Mrs. O'Lady, roll a uh, fortitude save to, uh, or constitution check to stabilize. Nine. Oh god. You take no. one more point of damage and you're still bleeding out like a coward. Cowards bleed in. Oh. Nice. Fuck. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That is legally binding in the state of Illinois. <laughs> uh, the hand continues to try and uh, hurt you. Uh, 11 to hit your unconscious body. To hit? Yes. It's just uh, trying to like... Miss. Smash on you. Nice. Okay. Nice. Uh, trying to smash. And what it is Tigwid's turn. Jersey Shore? This is ridiculous. All right, I'm going to... Skyrim's giving us a lot of love tonight. I'm going to give the love back. Do you want the blue pill or the red pill? Red, red, dude! Classic. Classic red. All right. Grant this classic. It. Yeah. Just fire it off the table. <laughs> Knock some poor person unconscious. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I, I don't know my own strength. 17 on the die! Yeah! Four of 21! That's a hit, buddy. Yeah. Well, Kill right. it. Here Kill we this go. Horrible thing. Out of the. Out of the. Okay. Seven points of damage. And you kill the doppelganger. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> wow! Holy shit! Oh, we what a night! We're, we're not out of the woods yet. You no, are not, not out of the woods yet. The other hand that's still strangling, str strangling, strangling you, automatically deals three points of damage to you. I am unconscious. Zero, exactly. Zero. I'm actually disabled, right? At zero. Yeah. If you're at zero, you're disabled. <laughs> Yeah, Tiny Murder Club needs to come back. And yeah, where is Tiny? Oh, no. We need a Deus Ex Mona. I don't know why you didn't stick around. That's good, buddy. Thank you. Deus Ex Mona? Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. You already got your fake <laughs> bottle That cap. is good. Wow, I just I just caught that. That's awesome. That's really good. It you moves know, to the top bottle of the next... Cap. <laughs> 
Moves to the top of the next round. Doppelganger no longer goes. James unconscious. Sheila unconscious. Mrs. O'Lady, please roll another constitution save. Fail. Oh, man. Bleeding out. You're going to do this to yourself. What's your con? 12. Okay. What are you at? Negative four. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> We're literally one hit point away from a TPK. That's true. The that hand, is true. The hand goes to try and attack you. Uh, 11. Miss. Okay. Uh, it is Tigwid's turn. Troy, if you do a TPK, some people will love it. But a lot of people will feel like the old double doink against the Philadelphia Eagles just a wow. few weeks ago. Look, it was painful for me too because this, I would this never son of a bitch, that up. this son of a bitch, was rejoicing in the streets. Yep. <laughs> Find that man and escort him out. <laughs> Did Go you Bears. see that video of him burning a Walter Payton jersey? Yeah. It was yeah. really uncalled for. That no, was Gail Sayers. Yeah. Really uncalled for. Yeah. It was yeah. Gail Sayers. That guy never did anything for humanity. Yeah. He burnt it. Grant, what do you want to do? Your life is on the line, the life of all your friends, the entire party. I can't cast any spells, nothing with uh, any verbal components. Correct. So I'm going to swing at this hand. May I attack the hand on my neck? Okay, do you have the grappled condition on? Let me make sure that's happening. Just want to keep you honest. There were a couple people watching. Okay. I mean, you can't make an attack with a two-handed weapon. It's a one-handed weapon. Two-handed oh, it's weapon. only one-handed? Yeah. It's a kukri. kukri. Joe, leave oh, that is right. Well, you for just do such person. high damage. I was impressed. All right, here it comes. Get it. Stab it. It's like at your neck. It was a five. I use the blue die like a moron. Five is a miss on the disembodied hand. On the disembodied hand. I, wait, wait. I use a move action to urinate myself. You're staggered. You're, you're can't. staggered. You can't do that. <laughs> but you know what? Oh. Urinate for free. Free you action. Are, oh, nice. You're also Ooh, it's so warm now. And dying. Oh no. Yeah. You're Is right. that right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm so, having negative one now. Yeah. yeah. If anyone just walked in, all of the heroes are unconscious. Two of them are unconscious and dying. Goes back to the next round. No doppelganger. James, Sheila, Mrs. O'Lady, please roll again. Fail. Oh my God, dude. One more. Eight. I've rolled three sevens Eight. in a row. The hand retreats back to the body. It comes to Tigwid's turn. Roll your check. There you go. Pass. 19. You have uh, stabilized as well. The hand on you releases, goes back to the body as what? well. All of you lay there unconscious. Mrs. O'Lady, roll another stabilized check. Literally, my fourth seven in a row. <laughs> Take that damage. <laughs> roll another stabilized check. Uh, it's a fail. It's a fail. Oh Take that God. damage. It was on a 14 and it rolled off. Fail. Wait, what oh do you got? now? What are you at now, buddy? Nev negative seven. So it's DC 17. Yeah, it keeps going up. Natural 19. There we go. Yeah. Mrs. O'Lady. Mrs. O'Lady. I'm sure she's fine. She's fine. So you're all out, unconscious. The hands, the head is dead. The hands retreat back, maybe into the rubble, maybe back onto the corpse. You don't know. Time passes. You don't know how much time. Grant, you find yourself lying in bed. But part of you knows you didn't go to sleep in a bed. You, you, you're having these, these visions in your head of the, of the fight, of going down, of the hand, of the doppelganger. But now you find yourself in a bed. You're not lucid enough to suss out, though, that you're dreaming. And as this happens, you cough up blood on the white sheets in front of you. As you try to examine the blood splatter in front of you, you also look down to see that your feet are shackled to a bed. Tiny feet. A child's feet. Joe, this is serious. Why are you laughing? What, what's funny? There are children's feet shackled to a bed. The, 
Why are you laughing? What? You're a I'm father sorry. of two, you monster. Yeah, why are you laughing? I'm You're sorry. Monster. You're the Jesus last person Christ. that should be laughing. Why are you I laughing? I misunderstood. <laughs> I was just... <laughs> sorry. Wait. <laughs> Was it? Were you distracted by putting scary, horrific music on? on <laughs> yes, I was working on the music, and I thought that you were saying that like full-grown adult Tigwids just had a child's feet, oh. <laughs> and this the tiny image of him like trying to get around <laughs> on like size sixes. It yeah. just made me laugh. All right, that is funny. I, okay. I got you. That Constantly breaking his ankles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everywhere he goes because they can't support the weight of his body. How yeah. the hell do you walk with those <laughs> tiny <laughs> feet? Right, that's what I thought you were going for. It's canon. Tidy feet. Yeah. It's Troy's newest curse. <laughs> there's, there's a mirror hanging on the wall opposite the bed, and you see yourself in the mirror, and you're a young child. You're bedridden, you're sick, and possibly captive, because you're locked to the bed. Someone walks into the room. It's a woman that you feel a very strong emotional connection to, but they just empty your bedpan and leave food slightly within your grasp, all in a very perfunctory like manner they don't even really pay attention to you enough are you ready <laughs> may I continue <laughs> I try to make everyone feel bad equally yes you spread it around to like the crew uh, we were at dinner and he kept just saying such mean things <laughs> To each one of us, we were like, what, what are you doing? We're just trying to have like a team meal. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, I'm warming up. Like, I have to, like, I don't know what's going to work. So I just, I work out material it's uh, vicious. by being really mean to my close friends. If I can, if I can put you into that, then you can survive anything. Yeah, That's true. One of the we it's almost true. didn't. <laughs> yeah. You're the Bob Knight of GM. <laughs> like throwing chairs I did throw a chair at you. Yeah. The one thing you notice on this woman before she leaves the room, she has a scarf tied around her face, covering her mouth. Time passes. You're about to fall asleep. And in the distance, you hear sounds of screaming. You try to jump up, but your restraints keep you from moving very far. Outside the window, you see signs of struggle as various figures are very clearly slaughtering each other. Oh. And your room is then illuminated by orange light as the night sky begins to burn. The doors to your room blast open and that same woman from before falls onto the floor near your bed. She hits the floor hard, but as she tries to rise, another figure steps into the room and stabs her straight through the chest. Other gurgled cries of people clinging to life in the distance join hers and you start to lose consciousness. Just as you fade into oblivion, new sounds enter your periphery. As a paladin with a sigil of phrasma hammered into his breastplate enters the room, moves to your shackles and says, you'll be taken care of, lad. Matthew, once again, you find Mrs. O'Lady in these now eerily familiar deserted alleys. You're wandering the same endless alien city as yellow mists continue to pursue you from all sides. You hear a sound down an alleyway up ahead and to your left. So you turn to investigate, and as you do, you think you see a figure like look at you really quickly and then dart down the alleyway with your cane. In front of you, you amble as quickly as you can over to the alleyway. And you see that the alley is filled wall to wall with books, as if a library materialized out of thin air. So you, just, you just walk down the stacks, gazing up at the shelves, and something about this seems so intensely familiar, even though you know that you haven't been in a library in an alleyway in some alien city before. Before you can place where this place is, a wall collapses in the building next to you, revealing a disproportionately small room. Inside, you see an ancient Kalashite woman sitting on a stool at a simple table. She looks up at you and says, The past sleeps in the doctor's tomes, but your past was the sacrifice. She keeps repeating this phrase over and over again as black sludge starts pouring out of her mouth and oh. her jaw opens up wide until it goes completely backwards over her head. Oh, no. As sludge God. shoots up to the oh. ceiling. Oh, Your past sleeps in the doctor's tomes, Your... 
And your past your, is a your sacrifice. Your past is a sacrifice. Your past is a sacrifice. Oh. James is in a lavish room somewhere in a manor or some unknown estate. Maybe it's a manor, maybe it's a castle. You're not sure. But it's completely dark except for a shaft of moonlight that cuts into the room through a 15-foot high window that bears heavy purple curtains. When the moonlight hits the far wall, you see a halfling squatting over a chest, working its lock feverishly. As James stands on watch, he notices a flickering light sweeping across the slit underneath the door to the room, and you hear footsteps as well. James makes a motion, and then he and the halfling freeze like statues. He's like, you both lock in place. After a moment, the light passes on. James exhales and nods at the halfling to continue. As she resumes her work, the tool she is using on the chest slips from her grasps and falls to the polished dark oak floor. The sound is deafening in the silence of the night. James shoots a desperate look at the female halfling. Without warning, the latch of the door clicks open. Dim light pours into the room from a candle held by a young human woman. Appears to be a handmaid. In a heartbeat, in a heartbeat, her surprise and fear at locking eyes with the halfling turned to recognition as she sees James standing by her side. Her eyes widen. She knows you. She knows James. What are you do? Her thin voice, quavering, turns into a choked gurgle as a bolt takes her directly through the neck. Mm. She falls to her knees, feebly reaching for her neck as James lowers the crossbow and everything turns to blackness. Sheila, you're having trouble breathing. You don't know if you're anxious, nauseous, or just physically exhausted, but as you try to pinpoint the source of your lack of breath, you feel some sort of bug fly close to you and land right on your forehead. Oh. It's dark in whatever room you're in, so you didn't see it coming, but it feels unusually large. <laughs> and unusually moist. Oh, no. <laughs> you got no a way. bottle cap for Troy? <laughs> Spit take. All over his computer. Oh, no. You're <laughs> it is. It's on your mouse pad. <laughs> Honestly, moister than it should be. Oh. Just like the left. It shouldn't good. be moist at all. I don't know why. <laughs> it shouldn't. You try to time it perfectly so you can swat it away, but as you move your hands to your head, they stop short because they're locked above you in manacles. Oh, no. You realize your change of the wall. Hanging from your wrists in some sort of dungeon, maybe? You look down and you see that you're completely naked, covered in open wounds, some of which you can tell from experience are already deeply infected. Oh, no. You try to, like, cry out but the position you're in has made you in incapable of like drawing a deep enough breath to scream. Your rib cage is all pulled up. Still, you make an attempt using all your energy to thrash against the wall and position yourself in a way that allows you to whimper out a barely audible like <laughs> You're immediately spent again, exhausted. And just as you begin to fade out from all this, a deluge of warm, chunky liquid is thrown in your face. Oh. You try to cough, you try to spit, but even those reactions, those natural reactions take too much energy. So yet again, you're forced to collapse under the sickening weight of another bucket of human waste thrown in your face. Oh, God. It's like the Moscow Ritz Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly but surely, each of you begin to regain consciousness. Everyone roll a will save. Come on, James. 17. 17. Well done, Sheila. Tigwitz? 13. Okay. Okay, done. Uh, what about James? 19. And My second roll of the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Mrs. O'Lady. Twelve. All of you 
recover your normal amount of hit points. Oh, Ooh, man. Nice. So unlike what you felt that first night, Mrs. O'Lady, now you're able to fight through and recover your hit points. But I mean, some of you, your normal amount of hit points, you might still be unconscious. I'm still unconscious. I'm yeah. still unconscious. Yeah, we're just laying there. And the hands come back and kill you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but you guys are up. And awake? No. I was at negative one. So you're disabled. Yeah, so, you, so you're awake. So you can drink your potion. Well, I can drink my potion. With a constitution plus two, I don't get... No, it's just But you one. can heal us now. Yep, yep. So yep. I'm going to drink the potion. You're up. Everyone else still down. Drink the potion for myself. Oh, minimum damage. But I'm, 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 I'm up. I'm up. Uh, oh, I'm going to use all three of my blessings and all three of my prepared spells using spontaneous casting or two prepared spells, but I have three available to me. I'm going to make them all empowered. Nerd. So 1d8 times 1.5. <laughs> I don't need your life story, Grant. So. <laughs> First, reaching out to Mrs. O'Lady. Okay. All right. That's nine points of healing. Okay. Too. Huge. I wake up. Huge. You live forever. And then reaching out to the rat man, James. James. Minimum healing. Oh, oh my God. So that's, that's about right. You can uh, take the Joe out of New York. Uh, <laughs> that's three points of healing, I think. I'm from zero. That's right. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm conscious. All right. Uh, and then finally reaching out to his friend, everyone's favorite, Sheila. All right. That's 12 points of healing. Nice. <laughs> One point of healing. 12 points of healing. The thing is, is that my dice feel my emotions, Joe, and how I feel about the person I'm rolling for. And for you, <laughs> just trying to figure out how that's mathematically possible. It's eight you, they're empowered. plus 1.5. They're empowered. Uh, I'm yeah. using all of my blessings on all of my it. spells. So you're all awake. So minimum is definitely three. It's not four. Uh, I believe so. Let me just, let's, let's, well, we, we got some time to kill. So it's a 1d8. Let's grind the it's shuttle It's a big all. difference because otherwise I'm powerful hero. Uh, da -da, 50 percent more damage healed. So it's like actually uh, 1.5 points. So that might actually round down, right? So it's only two? Two, two, two. Oh, plus my caster, uh, plus my caster level, right? So three. All right, so it's two, three. Me, right? I did it right the first time. You don't I, need I can't right. explain the rules. I just spit out the right numbers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, James is messed up. Yeah. Yeah. We're all Emotional. up. Uh, Emotionally can, and can, physically. Can Tigwoods do a heal check to help along and maybe just? You're already stabilized. You're just at zero, right? Yeah, I'm just at zero. We just gotta so wait. He basically, he's like slow. Yeah, he's yeah. hobbling. Oh. So what do you guys do? You're in bad shape, even with this rest. Rest again. <laughs> what could go wrong? Let's, yeah. let's drag this body back to the barricade. At least show them we have one more before we rest again. Yeah, no. Which we must do. Well, no, definitely. But I think maybe, ah, I think, I think if we tell them, show them like how badly injured we've we've become, perhaps they would believe our story that we are who we say we are. Yes. I have no doubt in my mind that when they said three, they meant two. Yeah. Well, no, and maybe they'll we give us a, the second, they will get a say, bonus. This time only will make an exception. Yeah. Yes. They seemed friendly and reasonable people, so the I problem is they them. worship an evil deity named Troy. That's... Mm. Give no quarter. But of course it's worth a try. <coughs> I'm very sick. Yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna drag this body back. Yeah, yes. Matthew's cough was way more convincing than yours was. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna drag it back to the barricade. Mm -hmm. All right. As you drag it back, you do not see tiny murder clown's body. You heard ch 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 but you don't see any body. Is there, there blood on the floor? Is there drag marks of some kind? Survival Roll a uh, survival or perception. Nope. Four. Nope. Ten. Perception. <laughs> Fifteen. Yeah, Mrs. Old Lady. There's blood going in every direction. <laughs> blood everywhere. <laughs> on the walls, on the ceiling. Yes. It looks like that scene from The Shining. <laughs> 
Usually blood gets out of the second floor. It's <laughs> uh, a good one. <laughs> so, yeah. You don't know. Curious. What do you got there? We have another one for you, Crossbow. <laughs> Bring up the body. His name, by the way, is Crossbow Jackson. Yes. Is that it? Yes. Crossbow Jackson. All right, just leave it there. We and are. We'll take care of it later. We are extremely injured from fighting it. <laughs> is there any provisions you may have? Do you have several cure light wounds potions <laughs> behind the barricade that you might share with us? We are, after all, literally doing your work for you. <laughs> Hold on. As if you don't know. <laughs> exactly how many potions we have. No! <laughs> well, it was, it, was, it was a good effort. I'm afraid, my friend, you that your lack of generosity is going to come back to bite you in the end. That's something one of them would say. <laughs> You just want an old lady to die. You making me wonder who's worse, them or you? Where's that heart? They're worse. They're much worse. No, them. No, you're great. Chug, 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 chug. Like a roller coaster going up. Did you happen to see our friend, the little tiny murder clown? Yes, the little one, covered in blood. Yeah. That's the one. It came running at us. We didn't realize until it came very close. But yes, we fired at it. It seemed as if we hit it, but then he ran into the courtyard. Oh, but it is that awful burning rain. Yeah. So thank thank goodness he survived to be burned to death. (laughs) Yes, it's a much better way to go. It's the way he would have wanted to go, I think. (laughs) You've brought us two corpses, but we cannot take any chances. You must bring us a third. And then, maybe, we'll let you pass. Again, this strikes me as an incredibly arbitrary standard of proof, but I'll defer. Let's uh, go try to find another one of these awful things. I hope you have several days of rations on you. It is going to take us at least three days of rest <laughs> to go on one more hunt for you. Also, bring back provisions. <laughs> <laughs> the more provisions, the better. Bring, bring back a treat. Bring back a bring treat. Bring back something nice from the store. <laughs> a sh- a shrubbery. Yeah. I am two-thirds of the way towards believing that you're not doppelgangers. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're filling up the belief bar, like right. very, yeah. very slowly. It's a bar. It way. really <laughs> is supposed to be slightly different than a video game, right. but it's not. So it's just the same. Not with La Valley. Same just thing. The same. All right. Okay. Well. Uh, Get out of here. Well, luckily, there's plenty of meat. <laughs> I don't feel like we're playing this character from, anymore. So we, we're not going to starve, like at least. Yes. Good. Good luck. If you're not one of them, if you are, bad luck. <laughs> Bad luck to all of you. <laughs> Did you ever see a creature with a floating diminutive head, two disembodied hands? Is that something you come across in your battles against these awful creatures? What kind of mind games are you trying to play with me? We've seen all sorts of madness. Did you see anything like that, what I just said? Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. No. <laughs> Maybe you should really get out there sometime. It's exciting in the field. Oh, I have a question as well. Yes. Uh, just so this is, ter- it's going to sound out of the blue, but do your people have a, a practice of throwing human waste onto prisoners at all? As if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Absolutely not. We're not oh, savages oh. back here. Oh. We're the only refined people left in this asylum. Well, if you're so refined, I find it hard to believe that you wouldn't help those that are trying to clear this place of evil. We need to be safe. If you are who you say you are, and we let you behind the barricade, you'll be glad that we took such precautions. Right. This is pointless. Let's go find a place to hole up. 
rest for at least some time. Uh, should we go back down to the cells? Maybe that's the safest place to oh, rest. Boil the boiler room too. Was the boiler room. I think the boiler. There's room. plenty of nice soft ash to rest upon. Yeah, we could lock ourselves in the cells. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, okay. Go to the cells. Enough. Go to the cells. You go to the cells. You rest. Rest another day. As you rest, each of you in turn dream about that same city again. You dream about the falling buildings, the endless clouds of yellow vapor. And in the vapor, once again, similar to that first dream that some of you and Joe Shitty PC had, <laughs> you see shapes just appearing and vanishing in the mist up ahead. Fleeting unsettling things that you can't quite focus on. The minute you feel like you can see it, it just morphs into something or nothing. <laughs> After what seems like a lifetime of just staring into this void, an exhausted looking man with a ponytail of straight white hair stumbles through the fog at each of you. And you're all having these dreams separately but the dreams are all exactly the same. He's wiped out, white ponytail. It's a douchebag. And Get away from him. It's a total douchebag. He's got a man bun. <laughs> Says, I never got my money back from the fire festival. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this fraud. sandwich. Is that fraud? <laughs> False advertising. But you, you sense that he's, like, even though he's exhausted, he's insane with desperation. He has this look of desperation in your eyes. That said, he tries to, like, pass you by as if you're not even there. But right at the last minute, he, like, turns to you and grabs your arm. Not to hurt you, but, like, pleading desperately at you and just says, We're all lost here. We'll never escape! And then he rushes away into the fog ahead of you, saying, what have I done? 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 And disappears into the fog. And the dream ends. Man. Everybody roll will save. Oh, no. Oh, no. Read him and weep. Natty 19. Natty 19? Natty 19. Natty 19? Natty nine, but for fourteen. Sheila, twelve. DC twelve. Oh, we're becoming resilient to the horror of this place. You all recover your normal amount of hit points. Con plus one. What do you do? Are we all like? We're not all better, are we? Are we good? Are we good to go, or do we need more healing? I could use more healing. I need more healing. Desperately. Um, Tigwoods will reach out to his friends, Mrs. Old Lady, and won't give the big speech to waste time like Troy chastised me for last time. Mrs. Okay. Old Lady, first. Okay, so that is uh, nine points of healing. I'm up to full. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Let me ask you a question, Joe. Do you feel lucky? <laughs> Punk. Nope. Why don't you let Joe roll his healing? Yeah. <laughs> Joe, you can be no the deal. owner of your own destiny. 12 points of healing. Oh, yeah. Let's hunt some doppelganger. <laughs> um, and Tigwitz is uh, just going to pull back the veil. A little peek behind the scenes. Eight out of 11. He's going to leave it where it lays. You're a oh, you're brave man. Bold. I'm getting braver by the moment. Yes. Is it possible, uh, James is... No! These repeated <laughs> visions of this city, he wants to see if there's a knowledge check that he can do. Okay. This is a place that he could have some insight into. Hmm. Uh, is it knowledge planes? Is it knowledge religion? Knowledge arcana? General knowledge plane. Can I do it as well? No, because you didn't ask first. <laughs> knowledge planes, 24. Ooh, mm. wow, nice. Ooh. And I'm sorry. <laughs> 24, oh, huh? Yes. So you rolled a 24. <laughs> The old 2-4, right, Skid? <laughs> That's right. Skid, tell us a story about 24. Oh, 24, like the number uh, Michael Jordan wore, plus one. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Grant, you love 24, don't you? Oh, I love that it divides in by six into four. That's pretty good. 
Remember that show that we all watched? 24. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Loved it. Yep. Loved it. Every season. Yep. Just got Cougars better and better. All. <laughs> it was, that guy from Flatliners was in it, as I recall. <laughs> right? Ah, oh, man. What a show that was. Still? Out of the no- shows with numbers has names. That's in the top five or six. Mm. <laughs> I prefer Three's Company. You're right. You're right. I stand corrected. It's just been bumped down into seven. <laughs> I prefer Two of a Kind. Mm. I don't know that show. You know what we are. It was a Mary Kate and Olsen, Ashley Olsen vehicle when I was oh. in middle school. Oh, God. Y- you know what we are, Matthew? A party of five. Oh! It's true. No, we're a party of wow. five. Wow. Well, including this asshole next to me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> That this city <laughs> seems like something you read about, particularly in your studies of the elder mythos. Like this is a city that's described in like the extent of your studies. You can't quite place it. You like ka 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 ka. ka. Oh, it starts with a K ka. or a C. It's it sounds. It's very, driving me crazy. Two yes. syllables. Can't think of it. Wait. It's movie. First word. Boys and buddies. No TV. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that you can't quite place it. Can I do a potential spoiler? No. Okay, I won't. Yeah, go ahead. Do you remember in True Detective season one when Matthew McConaughey meets up with the old lady and they kick him out right after she says, "You know of Carcosa, where he, the Yellow King, lived." That's what I think this is. It's a Carcosa. Ooh. That sounds familiar. Oh! Does Tigwood say that? Yeah, I should get a bottle cap. <laughs> I never get bottle caps. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, 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 oh wow. Oh. Nice toss. It's a Troy bottle cap. It is. Oh, wow. Wow. So I'm generous. Gonna, I'm gonna, I might use this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He says Carcosa, Grant, not Tigwitz. <laughs> he hears this disembodied hear voice. Yeah. voice. <laughs> Sounds like a king from some about sort of an HBO show. Playing like, a giant. <laughs> <laughs> playing a giant with a massive head. head. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's just a giant head in the plains. That seems to make sense, but like your memory is so spotty, you can't quite place what Carcosa is. Yeah, but he'll tell is. them. He'll be like, I-, I studied this. I know I did. I looked it up. It's familiar, but I can't quite... But that name, it sounds familiar. And it's bad news. Yeah. If that is possible, if the dream world and reality have been so blurred that Carcosa is possibly a reality to you now when you sleep, yeah. this is this is Nightmare on Elm Street. Bad yeah. news. It's as I feared. Yeah, this is legitimately unsettling for me now. Like just hearing, just hearing that word. You're gonna add that to your list of fears. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I, 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 don't, I hate to get, get a new shirt, but I, I, I think I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I just realized you were wearing a bandolier. I am. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. P- someone sent this in. Please, people, continue to send us bandoliers. <laughs> uh, I love them, and I'm also wearing a picture of my girlfriend's face on my sweatshirt. So, <laughs> what do you guys do? What do you guys do? You've rested enough. Ah, uh, yes. No uh, thanks to you. James is feeling better. It's time to go hunt these creatures. Uh, there is a door up where we fought that awful diminutive head with the disembodied hands. And I mentioned in uh, Philly that like the door seemed like it could be opened with a little bit of effort. The rubble choking the hallway is kind of like wedged it closed. Yeah. But you could fucking pull it open. Let's sneak up there and see if the hands have been moved on or some such. And maybe we can get no, to that door. Yeah, I, th- I think that we've got to face them all. We just go back into that area to see if they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> At least. <laughs> uh, by the way, what's the lighting like in here? Is it completely dark up there? It's ambient. Ambient, okay. Uh, what is that? <laughs> that has no, in, no bearing on intensity. Joe whatsoever. accepted it. it was like, <laughs> ambient. Right, I just took that as low light. Ambient. Good. Good. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> Troy took it? an Ambien before he got out here. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> this is where he writes all these dreams. That's right. <laughs> The fun drive. The fun drive is the maximum. <laughs> the whole fun drive. Courtesy of Ambien. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's dim, dim light. Okay. I mean, no, honestly, it's darkness, but <laughs> it's too late to replay that first encounter. Okay, all right. Okay. It's Doc, let's who run doesn't it, have let's dark run it back. You know, let's take it all the way back. Wait, did we, we found sun rods, though, didn't we? You did. Okay, let's use one. Yeah, use a sun rod. And uh, Tigwitz always has uh, light cast on his Cougar shield. So okay. okay. At least so you want to That's go right. fast. That's right. You did that going up into the hallway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tigwitz, would you lead the way? Uh, I'm so scared, but... No, don't be frightened. It's okay. <sighs> all right. It's okay. It's just cosmic horror. It's fine. <sighs> it's all right. <laughs> well, when you put it that way, I guess I have to. And See? leads the way. All right, so you go up there and you push that door open? I do. Just like... Creaking, trying to do it stealthily if possible, but I have a negative four to stealth, so I won't roll it. And and the door, it can't be opened stealthily. It's just, it's too chunky. You see a small room that looks like it opens up to the south into a larger room. You'll be okay. I, I would like to cast Take light it. on an object in that corner to see if I can see any further or like right here. I just want to see a little bit further than I can right now. see a little bit more? Uh, Yeah, I'm terrified. I don't want to go another inch without knowing what else is in there. Okay, so you you see the the room opens up even further (sighs) and it looks like there's something going on to the west. Oh, I see the edge of something! Oh shit! You screwed up, LaValle. (laughs) No, no. I did that on purpose. Oh, you want us to see it? Oh. I want you to see it. I want you to watch. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I want you to watch while I do it. <laughs> and and Tigwood's eyes just like glaze over and he almost faints. And he says, Sheila, 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 uh, could you, could you go first, please? I, I don't want to see what's No, there. mate, are you, you all right? You seem even more fright than usual. Are you, are you okay? With everyone, what is it? Uh, I just, I remember being rescued at some point, but I also remember ending up in a monastery and the sisters, Phrasman sisters, beating me with anything they had nearby whenever I would answer a question wrong. And I remember every once in a while seeing a vision of the lady herself. And I would tell them what I saw and it was all they could do to stave their hands from hitting me again. And all of these dead female attendants throughout this asylum are just giving me a bit of a flashback. I'm sorry. I can't always keep it together. No, that sounds terrible. So, out of deference to your uh, uh, horrifying flashback, I'll go first. Oh my god, thank you, <laughs> Sheila, thank you, Sheila, thank you, Sheila. Yeah, so, don't, don't worry, stay here. <coughs> Take a couple of deep breaths. <sighs> Perhaps some herbal tea. You have that? No. <sighs> So I crack a sunrod, uh, and I and I go in. First. And you go into the room. Yeah. Well, it's funny that it should be you that goes into the room. Oh no! Oh, no. Because you see three figures manacled to the wall. Oh no! Sturdy racks and toppled tables suggest this space once served as maybe a laundry. Oh. Much of the northern end of the room where you're entering, Sheila, is just filled with rubble. But to your right, on the western wall, a structure of pipe-like crossbeams fills the alcove, and three figures are manacled to the rack here. Immediately, you're pulled back into that dream. Yeah. The shit is thrown in your face. Yeah. From south to the north, there's a human wearing stained yellow sheets as robes. Oh. And you see he's got some sort of symbol emblazoned on his forehead. In the middle is very clearly a corpse of a partially eaten human in a oh. white patient's gown. Oh, no. Lastly, to the north, is an emaciated-looking creature with graying skin stretched out over its sickly-looking body, sharp ears, Long fangs protruding out over its blood-soaked mouth. Oh, no. What do you do? Um, so, yeah, I think Sheila's definitely taken aback by this. 
and he sort of slowly kind of works his way across the room like closer to him doesn't get within five feet but like kind of moves up to the center and getting as close as he dares kind of inspects them all in turn and sees if there's anything James is going to move up as well can I do a knowledge check on the symbol yes. I have a arcana mm-hmm. okay oh natty 20 28 nice it's it looks like a flame shaped chalk mark mm-hmm. but it's nothing you recognize it ah. has the the sort of feeling like some sort of cult symbol yeah yeah but it might be something that is germane to this area okay um, can I tell if any of them are conscious? Uh, the person in the yellow seat, uh, the yellow robes is conscious, and the gray-looking creature is both conscious and eating the one in the middle. Oh, no. Oh. So it's just like... You left that out. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for the right time to the lead there. <laughs> That seems like a That's... relatively important detail about the three <laughs> figures. It's really into it. <laughs> the relationship between those two creatures was not very well defined. <laughs> it's a nourishing uh, relationship. Oi, stop that eating for a moment. Yeah. If you please. It's Hi, really stop, stop that. It's really wrapped up in what it's doing and it doesn't pay attention to you. You feel like you might be able to get its attention. I throw a rock at it. Hi, so, stop. Bounces off its head and it just keeps gnawing on the arm. <laughs> All right. Uh, keep going then, I suppose. Uh, and then I go over to the yellow stained robed figure and like in that scene in Aliens under the under the under the uh, reactor I grab it by the hair and like lift up its face before you even get close to it it just like lashes out at you oh no it's like but its hands are still manacled good and it just says praise praise words fail words fail praise Sandalu sees. Sandalu sees. What? What? Who? Can I do a knowledge check on that name? Sure. Arcana? Yeah. You can try okay. Arcana. I'm going to do it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, 14. 27. Ooh. Not a name you're familiar 28. with. 28. Oh, still not a name you're familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't DC 28? No. Shit. Uh, it's not a reference to the Olivia Newton John song and movie. Xanadu? That's Xanadu. Oh, that's yeah. the... Yeah. Okay, that's different. Yeah. Um, Xandalus! <laughs> Xandalus! Uh, no, yeah. Crazed look in his eyes. Desperation. Clearly not there-ish, but also, like, affected by something. Praise. Praise. Words fail. Xandalus sees. Calm down, mate. Who's this Zandalus of which you speak? He just keeps repeating those three phrases over and over as if that's all it can say. I turn back to the other. He's not really listening. <laughs> Meanwhile, he seems the, preoccupied by something. The other creature just keeps eating away at the middle one. And this one. <laughs> can't eat just one. <laughs> Too far gone. Too far Too gone. Too far this gone. One. Um, let's get it. Yes. Mm. There is a door to the south that I have not revealed on my wonderful app here. Tigwitz, put it out of its misery, can it? <laughs> well, no, wait, I mean, you see? I mean, they're manacled, we could probably save it. Can I do a heel check to see if it is? Wait, I'm talking about the one that's eating the other corpse. Is it? No, well, that one, yeah. I, I would Fangs think would, coming out of its I mouth. I want to do a heel check to skin. see if the creature in the middle is able to be saved or it's beyond being saved. Yeah, roll a heel check. Three plus seven, ten. Well, it's being eaten. <laughs> and it's not putting up a fight. Right. <laughs> it's but not you, at all well. But you think it might have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> it's just breathing. Can I see that? <laughs> no, I mean, you're talking about the dead creature in the middle? Yeah, yeah I want to deprive the... the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dead giveaway. That was a dead oh, giveaway. Okay. I'll attack the dead creature. Oh. Well, let's dead kill right. the thing. Should we kill the thing? <laughs> yes, kill it. Right. Here we go. So what do you do? You just walk up to it and oh. stab? Straight up to it. And I roll a critical threat. 19 on the die. Don't wow. worry. Crits in this game don't really matter. I know. Yeah. I know. So you misery. just walk up to this thing uh-huh. that has done nothing to you. And as far as you can tell, 
is an upstanding member of society. It's an no. enemy of the state. No, it's substantial it's not evidence that it's not. Yes. So Which you failed to evidence. disclose initially. I just feel as if you should have parlayed with it. We Maybe tried. You would have learned. We tried. We There's tried. no tried. proper system of law here. We are the law. <laughs> but instead, you walk up and you critical threat it. Roll to confirm. Oh, no. I'm, this is the worst critical. All right. Mm. I think it's a great critical. Natural critical. two pulled a Joe does not confirm. Natural two not confirmed. Roll damage. Oh, no. Four minimum. Four minimum. I don't know if this is good or bad. It seems it's bad. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait a second, Skid. <laughs> it looks bad. <laughs> I'm looking at him. You attack it. It turns and looks on you. And you can see this, like, foam around oh. its fangs. Turns on you and goes to bite. And I'm assuming it's going to sink its teeth into you and infect you with some horrible, oh no, horrible disease. And we'll find out what happens in Dallas. Oh, oh no! Thank you, everybody. Oh. That's it. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time.